for the purpose of this video, I'm going to show you how to insert sound into your flip chart in just a couple of very basic ways. We're going to start with what's readily accessible to you right here in your Active Inspire, and those are your shared resources here in your resource browser. I get to my shared resources by coming to the icon that's second from the left and we are going to select the clapboard and the clapboard is where your resources are. So we select the clapboard and shared resources and we get all of these options here. I specifically want to build a flip chart where I put animals in the flip chart and I want my students to be able to select the animal and hear the sound that comes from the animal. One that I know is of particular interest to boys in my class is frogs. So I went ahead and typed in the name frog. And so now that I've entered that, I'm going to hit enter. And down here at the bottom of my screen in the resource browser, you'll see that I have several things, several items coming up frog. Well, there is a picture of a frog. So I'm going to click the frog and drag him right over to my flip chart. I can resize him and edit him, make him anything I want. I can even select him to drag a copy so that I have multiple frogs here. I don't necessarily want that, so I'm going to hit my undo button and just make one frog. I think I'm even going to select him and undo drag a copy so that he's one frog. As I said, I want my students to be able to click on this frog and hear the sound the frog makes. So I'm going to have to go back over here to my shared resources and go to the word sounds. When I click on sounds, then I have a list of sounds that I have access to in my shared resources. I have animals here. So when I click on animals, here at the bottom of, this, of the resource browser, I can scroll through the options and see if I can find a frog. They're in alphabetical order, and so there you go. When I get to the F's, I find frog. Well, I'm just going to click it, click the icon, and drag it over. And when I select it and press and click on it, you hear that sound. So that is the sound I want the frog to make. So since I want it to be one singular click where the students click on the frog to hear the sound that it makes, I'm going to move the sound icon over here on the frog. I can put it in the center. As you see, there's a little blue circle with an arrow in it that you see on the screen right now. That little blue arrow will show up any time that you have a sound embedded in the screen. That icon tells students that if they click on that area, something hidden is going to happen. So, I don't like the way you can see that speaker sitting on the frog's belly. So I'm going to move the speaker up to the frog's mouth. Notice that the blue icon, the blue circle with the arrow in it, continues to show. So I want to make the speaker disappear. I'm going to right click and you see now that the speaker is selected and I have other options here. I'm going to go right here to my translucency icon and I'm going to make the speaker disappear by sliding it over. And then as you see, now the speaker is gone, but look what happens when I hover over the frog's mouth. I get the blue circle with an arrow in it. That reminds me of the play button that's on a CD player or on a DVD player or some type of device like that, even on my iPod or my cell phone. So look what happens when I click on the frog's mouth. Notice that when I click on the frog's mouth, I hear the sound. 